Nice crew. That's great. I like it. I like it. I am. I'm trying to just, like, keep my flip-out factor to a minimum. Yeah, keep it down. I'm detoxing from everything. I'm detoxing from cable TV right now. Cable TV, it's a monster, isn't it? I mean, you sit there going, I should go to sleep. <laughs> but there's still something on my television set. I have 40 bucks a month, this thing never goes off. When you find yourself watching a tractor pull at 5 o'clock in the morning, it's time to pull the plug on that life support system, all right? Because cable TV, it gives you the attention span of a gnat. You watch cable TV for a couple of years, try to read again. <laughs> the big bear, I ain't got time for this. <laughs> I got other things to do, I'm telling you. I'm also stopped drinking coffee. I stopped drinking caffeine, actually. I stopped about eight months ago. I was doing like 10, 15 cups of coffee a day and getting some real good sleep. <laughs> Is it time to get up yet? No, not yet. <laughs> I'll just lay here and twitch for a couple of more hours. <laughs> I can't wait for that. What is it, 147? Okay, toss, toss, turn, turn, 148. <laughs> toss, toss, turn, turn, 150. Oh, I slept for two minutes there. So must have dozed off for a minute. <laughs> it is amazing. That clock radio snooze alarm. Where would we be as an American Republic without that extra five minutes sleep? <laughs> we all do basically the same thing. We set the clock radio an hour ahead of when we really want to get up, and then we just bang away on that drum, don't we? <laughs> Ooh, five more minutes sleep. Ooh, another five. Ooh, I'm really resting now. <laughs> well, this is the way to sleep, just like this. I'll set the thing 11 o'clock at night, and I'll bang away until 7 in the morning. <laughs> I'll get a workout for my arm. I'll get two of them. That way it won't be lopsided. I'll get some for my feet. Total body workout and sleep. It's amazing changes. I mean, I stopped drinking coffee or caffeine. <laughs> Which one, Rich? I don't know. I'm so confused. <laughs> I stopped doing, doing, <laughs> stopped doing caffeine, like a main line. I stopped doing <laughs> I stopped with a caffeine I can do things I can never do before, like wait in line. <laughs> You ever watch someone worked up on coffee in a bank line? <laughs> Let's go! You got more dollars back there, bring them out! Look at it, 30 people, two dollars, we're not moving! I got a dentist appointment in three hours! What are you doing this afternoon, pal? Nothing and get behind me! Back up my spot, back up my spot! <laughs> I would drink coffee and drive in traffic like Road Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm doing adrenaline. Adrenaline's great, isn't it? Okay, I'll take a stand for all of you. Adrenaline is good. You all do adrenaline every once in a while. Say you're driving along in your car. Not really paying attention. That car in your lane that was one mile up the road is now three feet in front of your bumper and is no longer moving. But you manage to break it down and avoid the accident, you give it that <laughs> All right. I like that a lot. Uh, we better stop right now. OK. Thank you very much, folks. Okay. Hi, how are you? Good, okay. I feel very good. I'm in New York and I'm wearing this coat and I and I feel very, very, very Avenue A, very Avenue B, very Fifth Avenue, very, very, very Lexington. I feel like I'm a fire engine going down Lexington Avenue. I'm snow. I feel like with this coat I want to just scream obscenities and not wear shoes. I really I really do. I want to like just just pee in a subway. I don't know. I have a lot of feelings tonight. I I really do. I really want to work for the New York Stock Exchange. I want to jump off the Chrysler building. I really do. I, but I don't. I have a lot of feelings. I, I feel like I'm having an audience with the Pope. Yet at the same time, I feel like the Pope is in this audience. I, uh, very strange. I was very excited about coming to the show, you know, and I I was so excited that I, I, I dressed improperly and I mismatched my geranimals. I'm wearing the um, zebra and the cow. Uh, no, I, uh, I'm very excited. Comedy Tonight flew me out from um, Los Angeles and uh, I don't know, I don't like flying. I think there's something very frightening about chain smoking 30,000 feet in the air and uh, knowing that your zip code is changing every three seconds, you know? 
Very devastating, very frightening. And of course, you must all know that I abuse my liquor privileges on the plane. I, uh, I do. I get very, very drunk, and then the, the stewardess comes by, and it's like, I love you so much. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever noticed, and this is what I noticed on the plane, was that people, as they drink, their speech progressively gets more slurred, except for their drink order. So it's, <laughs> I have a bourbon and soda. <laughs> I'm having the white wine. It's just, a, it's just not right. It's just not right. Anyway, I should tell you a little bit about myself. We have such a short time because I have to go out and scream obscenities in the street. I, um, I went to a very California high school. Um, instead of uh, saying the Pledge of Allegiance, we would just lay on the floor and go through a past life experience. Um, <laughs> it's true, one day I came home from school and I said, Hey, Dad, I'm William the Conqueror. And he said, Go clean the garage. No, but it's very Shirley MacLaine, very Three Dog Night, very on the verge of fifth dimension. I don't know. It's very, very Bob Dylan, very this side of Melrose. I, um, no, I, uh, I, the number one excuse for being tardy in my school was that you were involved in a custody battle, you know? <laughs> the black side of Glendale. Um, you'd say uh, things like, I'm sorry I'm late, but my mom completely freaked out on the stand, you know, it was very... <laughs> I think that's sad. Anyway, um, no, I, we used to call our teachers by their first name in LA, you know, it's like Cynthia and John, you know, it's like, I'm sorry, Cynthia, I didn't do my homework, I was not in the space, but I feel okay about it, and I don't want to invalidate you, you know, <laughs> very, very intense. Anyway, um, I went to UCLA um, for lunch, and uh, there, there was nowhere to park, you know, I drove around the place twice, I said, you know, this is like a bitch, I might as well just go to Thrifties and read magazines, and I did, and, uh, but I had an interesting experience the other day in a supermarket, I want to tell you about it, I realized how everything now is termed light, you know, they have like light Doritos, Crystal Light, Pepsi Light, light beer, light wine, and I came across this thing called light bulbs, you know? And I was like, I, was, I could not think. I was like, what are light bulbs, you know? And I grabbed this man, and I said, excuse me, sir, what are light bulbs? And he was visibly shaken. He was very taken aback. Anyway, you've been a very, very nice audience. Thank you very much. Rich Scheidner. Thank you. Taylor Agron, Charles Zucker, Larry Scrano, Mitchell Rose, and our announcer, Mark McEwen. Hey, Taylor, you just did a movie in Spain? Yeah. How is Spain? Spain is the worst place in the world. It was just <laughs> absolutely... <laughs> Any reason for that? Oh, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure Cum Chia would be right up there with it. It was miserable. They, they eat sardines at every meal. Uh, the people um, don't speak English. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. How rude. I was there for a long time. It was very rude. I did a movie, a very, very exceptional film about... I was a Harry Krishna for three blocks. So it's about... <laughs> <laughs> you have to write a movie through that. Huh? Well, What's well, the name? Of the, movie. the movie is about a bear who wants to study the Torah, and it's called, uh, <laughs> the movie is called Yentl Ben, and, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 go ahead. Well, I mean, it's, I don't want to give too much away. At the end of the movie, I stand on a cave, and I sing, Boo Boo, Watch Me Fly. It's a very <laughs> devastating film, and, and, but I also have another film coming out, too. Well, it's a movie of the week. It's called uh, Goober the Forgotten Pile, and uh, it's... Uh... Robert Mitchum stars in Foreign Injury on Tom LaBrie's Night Comfort Theater, next from TV Porter. I'm really... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Everybody wants to know, how do you feel when a joke bombs? How do I feel? Yeah. I don't really care. I don't... Well, I mean, I don't know. Like, I've never had a joke bomb. I've been in this business, son. No, I don't care. It's just like, because it's like... No, I don't like this. I hate that. You know when comics do that? You ever see that? Joke doesn't work. Comic goes like... 